It's now live. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the um, licensing subcommittee this morning. Could I have, before we deal with the preliminary issues, could I have a nomination for chair, please? Okay. And um, all in favour? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Over to you, Chair. Thank you much. I'm Councillor Lee Mason. Uh, now that the Licensing Subcommittee are again meeting with members of the public physically present, please be assured that we have put appropriate cleansing and social distancing measures in place to ensure that this meeting is undertaken in a COVID secure manner. This has included um, a request for all attendees to have taken an LFD test within 48 hours of the meeting, the use of NHS track and trace app or attendee log, team meter social distancing, the wearing of masks when not seated, a one way system in the Guild Hall, and an attempt to check upon arrival. Limited public seating has been made available. However, this meeting is also being webcast to allow the public to attend remotely if they so wish. May I draw your attention to the fact that this meeting will not will be live streamed. The public seating area um, is not directly in view of the um, camera, but anything that is said could be live streamed. Can I please wear, ask members to remain seated throughout the duration of the meeting and to wear a face covering unless seated. Please only use seats marked with a green circle unless you're within your bubble. And if the continuous fire limb sounds, please evacuate the room and public gallery by the stairwells. Do not attempt to use the lifts. Please assemble a Queen Victoria statue in front of the civic offices. In order to comply with the Guildhall's Trust Fire Marshal regulations, anyone signed in at the Guildhall reception desk should sign out when leaving the building. Members of the press and public also permitted to record the meeting on the understanding that it neither disrupts the meeting nor codes those stating explicitly they do not wish to be recorded, which are um, please can anyone use the microphones and remember to switch them off when they're finished. I'm going to ask us to go around, actually do declaration of members' interest first. I've got no declarations. No. Which case, I'm going to ask us to go around. I'm Councillor Lee Mason from Cosham Ward. I'm Councillor Ian Holder from St Thomas Ward. I'm Councillor Madrick from Paul's Grove Ward. And I'm asking Democratic Services. Good morning, my name is Ben Attrell. I'm a solicitor employed by the Council and I'll be advising the subcommittee this morning. Good morning, Derek Stone, Principal Licensing Officer. John Smith, uh, Councillor for Easton and Craneswater. Um, I think we need to have the microphones moved around a little bit, just where... You can unplug them if you want to grab one from elsewhere. And you push the button at the back of it. Councillor Mason, you have two people in the far side who are speaking as well. Ah, okay. Can I ask um, if you could introduce yourselves as well, please? Sue Allen, resident at 114 Festine Grove. Thank you very much. And if you press the button off again to. Okay. It's a red light showing your microphone's on, so it's, if we were trying to turn them off at the end, otherwise it can be a little bit difficult. Um, I'll hand over now to Licensing, if you'd like to introduce the case, please. Yes, good morning, members. We're here today to consider an application for the grant of a premises licence for By the Beach South Sea Cafe, 27 St George's Road, South Sea. The matter has been referred to the committee for determination following receipt of relevant representations from other persons, both in support and against the application, which I will touch on shortly. The applicants are Lindsay Martin and Lee Tyndall, who are present today. The application is for the sale by retail of alcohol both on and off sales, Monday to Sunday, 10 o'clock until 2300 hours, and opening hours from 7 o'clock to midnight daily, and there are also some additional hours for Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. The applicant is detailed in the operating schedule the steps they intend to take to support and promote the licensing objectives. 
and these can be found in the redacted application form attached at Appendix A in your bundle. A plan of the premises is attached at Appendix B with an additional fire exit escape plan. The provisions relating to the grant of a premises license are contained within Part 3 of the Licensing Act 2003 and associated statutory regulations. Public notice has been given by way of press notice. A premises notice and local ward councillors were notified of the application. There are no grounds therefore for the committee to reject the application for non-compliance with the prescribed advertising requirements. Members, in December 2020, the applicants Lee and Lindsay purchased 27 St George's Road, which consists of the existing retail premises on the ground floor and a four-bedroom masonette, which is private accommodation, above, covering the first and second floor. To the north side of the retail unit is a covered carport, allowing private access from the front to a private enclosed wall garden at the rear. The rear garden is not intended to be used as part of this business by the applicants. Whilst the premises are in a residential area, it must be stressed that this is not a new commercial business. The ground floor was used as a cafe, trading from as early as 1945 up until 1996. During that time, the owner's son, Carl, who worked in the cafe, uh, went and um, attended Highbury College, obtaining a City and Guilds qualification in hotel and catering. And in 1996, when the cafe closed, Carl opened uh, the shop as Carl Christian Cakes in January 1997. He traded there until December 2020. The cafe will only allow up to 30 covers comfortably with toilets and a food preparation area at the rear of the building. The designated premises supervisor has 25 years experience in the licensed trade but the applicant Lee is in the process of securing his own personal license. Once he has applied for his personal license through Port City Council, Lee will assume the role of DPS for the business, so will not only be the holder of the premises license, but will be the resident in occupation at the premises. There are no representations from any of the responsible authorities. You will know, members, uh, paragraph 912 of the revised guidance issued under section 182 of the Licensing Act states each responsible authority will be an expert in their respective field and in some cases it is likely that a particular responsible authority will be the licensing authority's main source of advice in relation to a particular licensing objective. For example the police have a key role in managing the nighttime economy and should have a good working relationship with those operating in their local area. The police should usually therefore be the licensing authority's main source of advice on matters relating to the promotion of crime and disorder. Relevant representations have been received both in support and against this application. There are nine representations in support with a further support letter received after the closing date for representations and that is not included in your bundle. Two representations were withdrawn following an explanation by the applicant. Again those are not included in your bundle. There were 42 objections citing various concerns regarding noise, crime and antisocial behaviour. Many of these representations have been generated as a result of two unsigned flyers that were posted through the residents' letterboxes, which has resulted in raising the fears and concerns of residents living nearby. All of the representations are attached at Appendix C. At Appendix D is a letter from the applicants outlining their business model in an attempt to allay the fears that were raised by the flyers which are attached at Appendix E. And in your bundle at Appendix F members there are a number of photographs showing the external and internal areas of the premises and an aerial view. When determining the application the, the committee must have regard to the promotion of the licensing objectives which as you know are the prevention of crime and disorder, public safety, prevention of public nuisance and the protection of children from harm. You must have regard to the Licensing Act 2003, the adopted Statement of Licensing Policy, judgments of the High Court, which your legal advisor can give you guidance on should that become necessary, the current statutory guidance issued by the Home Secretary in accordance with Section 182 of the Act, the representations including supporting information presented by all the parties, the human rights of all parties concerned to ensure both a fair and balanced hearing and to consider any public sector equality duty required from public bodies to have due regard to. 
The Statement of Licensing Policy lays down a general approach to the determination of licensing applications, and any such application will be considered on its individual merit. Equally, any person permitted by the Act to make relevant representations to the Committee will have those representations considered on their individual merit. The Committee should have regard to paragraph 7.1 to 7.5 in relation to such circumstances where it may be appropriate to consider the imposition of conditions on a premises licence. The updated statutory guidance issued by the Home Secretary in accordance with section 182 of the Act refers to the considerations of applications for the grant of a premises licence in chapter 9. You may wish to consider the following extracts. As a matter of practice, licensing authorities should seek to focus the hearing on the steps considered appropriate to promote the particular licensing objective or objectives that have given rise to the specific representation and avoid straying into undisputed areas. A responsible authority or other persons may choose to rely on their written representation. They may not add further representations to those disclosed to the applicant prior to the hearing, but they may expand on their existing representation and should be allowed sufficient time to do so within reasonable and practical limits. Licensing authorities are best placed to determine what actions are appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives in their areas. All licensing determinations should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. They should take into account any representations or objections that have been received from responsible authorities or other persons, and representations made by the applicant or premises user, as the case may be. Your determination should be evidence-based, justified as being appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives and proportionate to what it is intended to achieve. Determination of whether an action or step is appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives requires an assessment of what action or step would be suitable to achieve that end. Whilst this does not therefore require a licensing authority to decide that no lesser step will achieve the aim, the authority should aim to consider the potential burden that the condition would impose on the premises licence holder, such as the financial bur burden due to restric restrictions on licensable activities, as well as the potential benefit in terms of the promotion of the licensing objectives. However, it is imperative that the authority ensures that the factors which form the basis of its determination are limited to the consideration of the promotion of the objectives and nothing outside those parameters. Further advice on determining what is appropriate when imposing conditions on a licence is provided at Chapter 10. The licensing authority is expected to come to its determine based on an assessment of the evidence on both the risks and benefits, either for or against making the determination. The licensing authority may not impose any conditions unless its discretion has been exercised following receipt of relevant representations and it is satisfied as a result of a hearing that it is appropriate to impose conditions to promote one or more of the four licensing objectives. It is possible that in some cases no additional conditions will be appropriate to promote these objectives. Members, I will remind you about the review provision. Paragraph 11.1 says the proceeding set out in the 2003 Act for reviewing premises licence represents a key protection for the community where problems associated with the licensing objectives occur after the grant of a premises licence. At any stage, following the grant of a premises licence, a responsible authority or any other person may ask the licensing authority to review the licence because of a matter arising at the premises in connection with any of the four licensing objectives. Members, once you've heard the representations, your duty uh, is, is to consider appropriate, um, what is appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives and you will either grant the licence subject to such conditions as are consistent with the operating schedule, exclude from the licence any of the licensable activities or uh, re reject the application. I don't think I need to say any more at this stage members but obviously I will be here throughout the proceedings should you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you members have any questions? So I've got one. There's been some reference back and forward in the both of the flyer that went out in the letters about the status of the rear garden and whether it could be used for licensable activities or not. I don't suppose you could just expand on that, could you? 
yes, certainly. I think the applicant is probably better placed to say what their business model is. But the um, there is an enclosed rear garden. Obviously, consumption of alcohol is not a licensable activity. Um, so, it, technically, people could go out and um, have a drink in the garden, um, but that is not part of their business model and it's not proposed by the applicant. Thank you. Um, do you, the applicants have any questions they wish to ask of the license and offset? Do you, interested parties have any questions you wish to ask of the... Yeah. So the rear garden will be part of the license, will be licensed for people to drink? No. It won't. So there's no license out there. So people can't go out there and drink. Is that what you're saying? No. The, the, there's a plan which will give you, which will demark the licensed area. The yeah. garden isn't included. No. Consumption of alcohol, however, is not a licensable activity. So, so technically, the garden can be used. well, technically, somebody could go out in the garden yeah. if the owners permitted that, but yeah. they've got no intention of putting that. And the same in the forecourt. The front forecourt. Well, the front forecourt is their private land, so people go out to the front and drink if they wish to. So those two areas, it's possible that people will drink on those two areas. That's right, isn't it? Potentially. Yeah. Um, right. Councillor Symes, can I? Sorry, I, I probably missed it when you did your introductions. Can you just confirm? Did you write a written representation, or are you representing? No, I'm representing two of the residents. And can you just confirm who those residents are? Sorry. Um, just for my records. I'll be asking as well in a second. Um, Eileen Douglas and um, Mr. Bonney, Mr. David Bonney. Okay. And Councillor Smith? Uh, uh, I'm representing uh, Ben DeMarco and uh, Miss uh, P. Booth, Polly Booth. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay. Just to give a bit of clarity to the license line, you couldn't purchase alcohol on the rear garden, you could only consume it if you had purchased it inside. Is that correct? The purchasing would be from indoors, yes. Yeah, so, as in it's not licensed to sell it on the rear garden, it's only if you were to take alcohol purchase inside out. Correct, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Derek, Thank you. Would, oh, sorry. Um, would you mind just confirming something? Is the reason that they can consume alcohol in the rear garden or on the forecourt because the license is applicable for on and off site? So if the license was just applicable for on-site, would the customers then be able to take alcohol into the garden or the forecourt? It, it's the, the actual consumption of alcohol is not classed as a licensable activity. So once the alcohol has been purchased, be it for on or off sales, technically people can go anywhere they want to drink it, if that assists. Okay, thank you. Um, Perhaps, perhaps it might just help if I interject um, and just explain. Unfortunately, it's a lacuna in the Act when it was implemented. The previous licensing regime did very much license the consumption of alcohol. The Licensing Act 2003 does not. It is the sale of the alcohol, which is the licensable activity, which needs to be regulated. But what um, that does not necessarily prevent is um, the subcommittee imposing a condition if they felt it appropriate after having heard all the evidence um, to deal with that issue. It may well be that the applicant is seeking to amend their application to clarify that point in any event. But, um, I just, just thought I'd mention that. Thank you. I've got questions from there. Thank you. Um, the applicants indicated uh, that there will not be consumption in the rear garden. How will they prevent that? Absolutely. Is that a question to me? Oh, I'm, I'm just asking. So somebody buys some alcohol. If we have the, sorry, I, I can't allow people to shout in when okay, people are speaking. Right. Okay. I'll let you ask your question in a second, but I'm going to get the answer first on that. Well, um, that's something the applicant needs to answer. I can't answer that. The applicant will be doing their presentation. You can ask questions of the applicant in a bit. Did you have a question for the licensing manager? No. no okay. In that case, if there's no further questions, the licensing manager, double checking, move on to the applicants if you'd like to present your case, please. So, um, I'll speak from notes. Um, obviously, I won't go over the letter that we sent out because obviously we've all got a copy of that, as have the residents. Um, I'll just start by saying, obviously, it's not ideal that we're here, but it's actually a really nice opportunity to be able to talk to you and have a question and answer scenario, which we've been denied up to now, actually. Um, we were obviously really disappointed with the level of 
numbers of objections and even more so that we found out it was a letter drop which largely created these numbers. In fact, to be precise, only two, uh, only two objections have not come from the four roads that were delivered to. So all the objections have come from the, the letter drop roads, which is the four roads um, mainly in your pack. Um, on top of that, we've had none. Um, and we do continue to have and have had a large number of residents locally walking by and coming in whilst we've been decorating and renovating just to give a, um, their support. And actually, since the letter has come down from the window, have asked actively if we've managed to be successful in our licence and are really keen that we are. So we felt quite um, you know, reassured by that. Um, so I'll start just by explaining the plans for the cafe and our business model because um, obviously that's probably generated the most fear. Uh, the flies were inaccurate. They did suggest that we would be using our outdoor premises of our garden and there is also a balcony on the first floor. Um, that was never in place. Um, on talking to one of the uh, neighbours that objected, they said we didn't not say we weren't doing that. So obviously we're new to the business. We didn't think we should write in what we shouldn't be doing, we just knew what we would write in to request. And we were also advised, which I think is, um, we want the neighbours to know, which we try and explain in our letter, just that we were advised to ask for the maximum so that we were able to then work from that um, rather than continually adding in requests as time went on. So the plans for our cafe at present are that we will be opening as a cafe in daytime hours from around eight-ish till four, till four or five. Um, at the weekends only. Uh, that will maybe move into the week when Lee is on school holidays um, and that will be largely due to whether or not we're successful in running the cafe itself. The hours in the evening that we've proposed is only for one to two evenings per month and that will just be to do something themed which isn't going to be an all-night dance. <laughs> it's going to be something like a cheese and wine evening or a gin tasting or an Italian meal with wine that goes along with it. So that's our pure and only intention and that will be usually a midweek and as I say it will be once to twice a month. The only additions we've put in there is Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve and that may even just be for personal use. Um, the only thing we've, we've added into that is obviously there may be private hire but that would be something like a children's party or something that might go on past the normal daytime hours of five. Um, obviously happy to answer any more questions if I haven't covered what um, people are worried about in that sense. Um, so when it comes to the alcohol um, side of our plans obviously we'll be stocking a really minimal amount of alcohol. We'll only be having enough so there'll be a few bottles, a few cans, and actually we're going to have in an area where we sell deli items. We'd like to sell bottles of wine that neighbours can come round and buy to take back home, or the off-licence being that they are able to buy something and take it as part of a picnic to the beach, or take the rest of their wine home after a meal. Um, in the daytime, that alcohol would be largely just to serve a beer or a wine with some lunch or a, or a platter of food. Um, we're not got any intention of being an off license. We don't intend to open to any hours that people just come in and buy and take away. We certainly do not want to run the sort of establishment that will be 16, 17 year olds coming in to buy packs of beer to take to the beach and then get drunk on the way home. So that's 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 not the people we are and it's not the people we want in our in our premises. Um, so that's the alcohol side again. If we haven't answered anything, please do ask at the end. Um, Moving on to the concerns that there are, obviously, that we're part of a terraced community and a terraced neighbourhood. Um, this isn't any different to the Eastney Tavern, which is surrounded by terraced houses. It's no different to the corner shop, which sells alcohol that you can leave with. And it's not a lot different to most of the other licensed cafes in Portsmouth. And they're all um, respectful and successful. Um, a bit about ourselves. We're both in full-time employment. This is a first venture that we've done, um, anything like this. We both have respectful jobs where we're not going to be able to do anything but follow a professional code of conduct. I work as a physio in the NHS, Lee's a teacher at a local school. So we have our own personal um, levels that we need to be more, even more vigilant than perhaps other people when it comes to adhering to Challenge 25 and making sure we respect our neighbourhood. Um, 
when we set up our evenings, we're certainly going to have, ver we'll certainly verbalise and we will have signs up saying please leave quickly and quietly and respect our neighbourhood. And as I've already alluded to, it's certainly going to be part of an organised evening, not people trailing in and out through the night, leaving at all hours. Um, I touched on it earlier, but we did explain fully in our letter about it not being a seven day a week process. Um, as I've said, we're both in full time employment. This will very much be a venture that grows from a weekend and a couple of evenings a month to possibly weekday opening in the daytime, but there won't be evening drinking in the, in the weekdays, in, in the weekend, weekends and weekdays, seven nights a week. Um, obviously a lot of other applications very near to us have been very successful in asking a lot more than we have laid out. I appreciate that in our um, gross um, application it suggests seven nights a week, 365 days a year, but we have explained um, and you guys have got an explanation about what we're intending. Um, they have obviously got longer um, hours that they'd like that they were able to play loud music and drink outdoors till the late evening and that's nothing that we're, we're, we're asking for. Um, so we've had some reassurance, as Derek mentioned, about there being a lot of residents that felt very reassured by our letter that went out. We would have sent one sooner if we thought that was process, but as I said, we're really new to this. But we are more than happy to explain to anyone. We've been talking to a lot of our neighbours, a lot of locals, um, and a lot of our um, business plan has come from what they've asked for, what they feel like there's missing in the area. Um, so we... We, we live here, this is our house, this is our home, we've moved here, we're proud residents, we want to do nothing but respect our neighbours, we're more than happy that they have our number, that they can contact us if they feel like something didn't go well or they want to report back, but obviously in our letter we also included that they're able to contact yourselves if they think that something is not being adhered to. Um, so yeah, we're, we're very open to conversation. We're only disappointed people didn't feel at the time when they were concerned that they could have knocked on the door and just asked. They've seen us a lot in and out and, and we would have been more than welcome to have um, placated some fears that way. Um, but we appreciate that wasn't how people um, felt comfortable to do that. Um, so we won't be open in the day. So we won't be um, needing to clear down late at night. I know there's some um, concerns about late night noise for clearing bottles and food. We're able to just bag up food that hasn't been used that evening and we have, as Derek mentioned, the carport next door which is a semi-covered area which we can store everything in and then we can um, clear out and, and clear out rubbish and bottles at a, an acceptable hour the next day. So we've got that, um, that plan in place. Um, the concerns about the license holder, Derek also alluded to, so Lee has completed his license um, course, he just needs to go through his application now the DBS has come through. All of our staff will be trained, the law be heavily um, monitored and we will have log books that we're doing regular training on any serving of alcohol, um, all along with the police guidance, but we were really reassured that they were nothing but positive in our application. Um, and, you know, I can't stress enough that there will not be any use of our premises other than the cafe itself, the toilets that lead from the cafe in the kitchen, and the front forecourt. So our house is our home. We're not going to be having people walking through our dining room and living room to get to a terrace on the first floor to drink because they've paid for drink downstairs. That's our home. It's a separate entity altogether. Um, so I can't stress enough that there will be no activity from our customers in the balcony or the garden, which I think we completely understood. You can hear a pin drop at the back of the house, which is the beauty of having that back um, area that goes under the courtyard of the four roads surrounding. So we wouldn't want to disrupt that because that's you know part of the joy of us living there as well. Um, I think lastly, we just want to say that we love living where we live. We moved there in December. It's a bit of a dream that we've bought our first house together and we want to do a bit of a business venture together. Um, we wanted to just create something that the community is sadly lacking at the moment. We're young people that like to go out for food and drink. We've been approached by a lot of people that are young couples, young families, and there's nothing around the area that really, um, that really allows for that. So we wanted to give back something to the area that everyone could enjoy, and that's largely what we are hoping to request today. Can I just clarify one point about the um, midweek hours until 11 o'clock? <coughs> Excuse me. That was due to sort of if Valentine's Day falls during the week, then that will give us the opportunity to hold a Valentine's evening for that. Um, and also possibly hosting a wine sommelier course where it would be early evening, but it would be a pre-booked event, not a roll-in off the street for that. 
yeah, Thank all you. all the evenings will be. Um, we will know who's coming. There will be a pre-planned number. There will be one seat to, sitting, and then people will leave. Thank you much. Do you members have any questions I wish to ask at this point? Just one question. Can I just confirm that you're only planning on bottles and cans? You're not planning on any draft beer or pumps? Or... Do you want me to answer that? Yeah. Um, at the, to start off, it, it would just be bottles and cans. Um, I'm not going to say that we're not going to do draft beer, um, but it's at the moment it would just be bottles and uh, cans. Hello, you're right. Um, just a few things. Will you be selling alcohol away from food, or will the alcohol have to be purchased with food? Uh, the alcohol will be sold away from food as well. They won't have to, but as um, Lindsay's already said, um, the, the wine supplier that we've looked into is a sea change. It's uh, not one that you can get in um, the local supermarket, so it's a quite specialist wine. So if, um, as say Lindsay said, if someone would like to just come and buy a bottle of wine and take it home because it's a, a more of a niche wine rather than a supermarket wine, then they can do so. Um, I obviously understand you're by the, the beach and the seafront. Um, will you be actively promoting outside the property on the forecourt that you can buy alcohol and consume it away from the premises? We won't be actively advertising for that. Okay. Um, and midweeks, obviously, you're, at the current stage, you're not planning on opening at all midweeks. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's because you've got personal jobs? That's job. because we've got yeah, normal jobs, um, so we're working five days a week, <laughs> plan on opening it at the weekends, um, and as Lindsay said, I'm a teacher, so I do have the luxury of a summer holiday. Um, if it is opening midweek to start off with, it will probably be maybe a, a Thursday, Friday into the weekend, but not five days a week, and then two days a week in the weekend. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you much. That's a couple of my questions asked as well. I've got a few more. Um, you've referenced about it's you wishing to have just a few events a year, and I assume that's you're applying for license because the temporary event notice you want to go beyond those numbers. Um, yeah, so sort of roughly two two a month, um, which obviously put us past the the number for the temporary. But it's also the administration in that the applying and sort of constantly doing it, making sure we've got it in time. As I say, we do have uh, jobs as well so it's, it's that constraints that would be on us as well so if there was a limit that you could only do two or four a month temporary event notices would be on top of that but that wouldn't be actually infringement on what your operational plan would be yeah okay and um, last thing about draft last entry you made reference that people would be coming in the evening you'd know who they were is your plan to be submitting a last entry time or would a last entry infringe upon you uh, so the, the sort of the, the themed events will be sort of a, a sit down at seven o'clock. So they will be there if they want their, their meal, and then it will be um, a closing time. So it will be a pre-booked event, ten thirty, finishing selling the alcohol and leave by eleven. So you wouldn't be envisioning, envisioning people coming across and travelling to you from other venues or no. on the evenings. No. Um, and you also made reference that it's your own home in the quiet that you don't plan to be uh, bottling up late in the evenings. So those sort of requirements of no noise would have an impact. Yeah. So if um, on the operational plan on the the layout we do have access to the carport um, that was mentioned earlier, so we can take bottles through that way and don't even have to go into the the rear garden to do that or go out front to transport those bottles. Looking at the uh, photos, you'd have trouble fitting down there at the moment. So, <laughs> we, that is a lot clearer now. Um, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Um, I think I'll leave a few others coming forward at the moment. But um, do members of the public have any questions they wish to ask? This is the opportunity if you wish to ask the applicants a question. Uh, no, you. It, the way it works, they've done a deputation of representation. You can now ask questions of them. Afterwards, you do your um, representation, and then we get to ask questions of you as well. So, this is just a chance to ask questions if they think you wish to ask. Yeah, just going back to my previous question, I've lovely to hear from you. Thank you. I've been thinking about the intention of preventing you from that Certainly. So, um, at the back of the shop, 
the cafe are two toilets and the, the back of the kitchen and those toilets are two fire exits. They will only be available as a fire exit. That's the only way we can get into our own property that way. And the only way we can get up to the stairs is by going through our own front door. So, yeah. Do you have a question you wish to ask of the applicants? deal with the number of cars that would likely to arrive. People won't walk to your cafe. I think I probably should interject and just, just make it clear to the subcommittee that unfortunately parking and traffic related issues are not um, encompassed by the licensing objectives and they're not within the remit of this subcommittee so any discussion on the point would be fruitless in any event. I'm afraid that yeah, it's not something that we can discuss here, but it's a license issue. Have you any other questions? Do you, Ward Councillors, have any questions? Yes, uh, you seem to imply that the cafe will only be open when you're present, but then you talk about having staff. Now, if you have staff and you're relatively successful, will you not want to open weekdays during the day if you have competent staff to run the business at that time? Or will you only ever be open when you're one or other of you are present? Um, as with any business, as it increases and as we get more successful, the plan would be for Lee to give up work so that he can be on site most of the time. But of course, it, it, similarly to any job, we would, if we employ staff, then we would expect they were competent to run it in our absence um, because we would be entitled to a break or a weekend off or a holiday. Um, at the moment, any staff we refer to are largely um, our family or family friends which will be helping us on a casual basis at the weekends um, we can't speak for how the business will grow I've, it explained already um, that obviously it may not grow um, and if it doesn't then that's our answer but if it does then obviously we have every right to open um, daily if we wish to I just add to that we still live above the shop as well so we will still be in the local vicinity if not on holiday Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, just a couple. Um, as your business grows, you just said as it grows, that would be, be fantastic. It does as well. Um, would you Have you got the opportunity then to change that fire exit into using that back garden? We really want to keep a separate home and professional life, so we would never do that. It also, although it's probably irrelevant to this, you would not want to try and sit anyone out there. It's, it's just not conducive to anyone sitting on that in the garden out there. It's not really a safe environment at the moment with there having been a tree there apparently before so it's not a safe and level playing field for anyone to go out and, and sit there. And uh, just another one, um, with regard to you asked for the, the maximum, why would you not, obviously that's what everybody does, um, what would you be happy with if you didn't get the maximum? As much as you will give us. Okay. Can I just ask, where will people go to smoke? So um, I did look up in um, legal terms what we're allowed to do. We're both non-smokers and actually really find smoking abhorrent. Um, obviously we can't control people, but we will actively have signs outside asking people not to smoke on or near the premises. Um, I'm aware that obviously they can't smoke around food, um, but we would actually like to make it a non-smoking area completely, um, similarly to our hospital does. You have to go completely off-site to do so. Um, so that's what we will be trying to um, evoke invoke when we are up and running. I'm not sure you can do that legally, but um, the other question I wanted to ask is, will people just be able to come in off the street and buy a drink from the bar and stand at the bar and drink? Um, so we won't have a standing bar. They'll either need to, they, they will, it will be an, a, a case of them being allowed to sit at an outdoors table, for instance, and order a bottle of wine to sit in the sun, um, as a lot of our residents have asked for. Okay, thank you. So just to confirm, you're not the front you will be using as area, but your intention is to have signs requesting people not to smoke at the front. Absolutely, and, and that will be daytimes only. It won't be in the evening. So you're not planning to use the outside area in the evenings ever. Is there a terminal time that you would be using the outside area? If we naturally close around 5 to 6 p.m., that would be, and that will probably be very seasonal because no one will want to sit out there in the winter. Okay, but in the summer nights when it's lighter longer you won't be used in the front area? No, because we'll be closed then. Okay. Thank you much. Um, so, uh, sorry, would you, um, would you happy, be happy for a provision to be put in place to confirm that then? 
from the outside perspective as in the seating past a certain time? Yes, we would be. Yeah. You would be happy with that? Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm just waiting to see if there's a... Any further questions? Anything cool? No. Okay, in that case, we move on to the um, members of public and deputations. I don't know who wants to start first. Any? Okay. I'm happy to go first if it assists. Um, thank you very much for speaking to us today. Um, it, you, you indicated it was disappointing that you hadn't received the objections prior to the flyer from the neighbours. Um, but equally, equally, we might say that actually it's because we were unaware. I appreciate that you put the public notice up and uh, informed the councillors. But to be frank, we weren't aware as neighbours what was going on. We do appreciate that it was a, a, a cake shop prior to, to your purchase and I hear that you say that it was a cafe in 1946 but actually there's not been uh, alcohol on that premises since that time so I understand you're disappointed but equally you must understand that the residents are disappointed that we didn't hear from you prior to the objections being raised um, secondly I would like to say it is quite different to the Eastney Tavern and it is quite different to uh, the local shops because we moved there without it being present if I'd moved next to the Eastney Tavern of course I would not be objecting to the alcohol being s sold from there because I would have known that that was premises where alcohol was going to be sold so with all due respect um, it is not similar to the Eastney Tavern and it's not similar to the local premises uh, further I would say that um, I hear what you say about selling niche wines and uh, novelty wines there is very close by a co-op and a Tesco so that it's not necessary for beachgoers to buy alcohol from the, on the beach premises there are other uh, retail outlets very nearby what I would also like to um, say and and urge the, the committee to consider is that it is a very wide sweeping application it's for seven days a week for a, a, a long hours during the day I hear that the applicants have no intention to open during the week and therefore my question is why is that license necessary it has to be proportionate to what their objectives are now my understanding of their objectives are to have a, a themed evening twice a month which sounds lovely and as a, a neighbour I would certainly wish to attend a, a cheese and wine my favourite tipple um, um, but I do not think it's appropriate in an area where there are numerous young families I don't have a young family but I know I'm, I'm aware of many of my neighbours that have they will have children that will wish to be asleep at least by nine o'clock you cannot, with all due respect and, and the best of intentions, minimise the noise that will come from such a venue if, if it was to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, I do appreciate that the applicants have, have said that that is not their intention. I then question why such a wide-sweeping licence. There must be provision for reduced hours to cover their objectives. Um, in relation to the other matters that they've risen, uh, uh, raised, um, I appreciate their confirmation and guarantee that the rear garden won't be used because that would be my concern having my house which is backs onto the row of their back garden. Um, I hear what the applicant said about it being a lovely area to live in. It is a very, very lovely and peaceful area to live in, and that's why I moved there in 2014. So having lived there for seven years, I would be devastated if that was taken from me. I have elderly parents who live in Ruskin Road who don't have a garden, and I will go and collect them, and we will often sit in my south-facing garden and enjoy the peace and the quiet and the sunshine. 
So, I'm, uh, in conclusion, I am not against a lovely little family cafe being opened. What I am against, and I would urge you all to consider carefully, is the need for a license for the hours that have been requested. Okay, thank you very much. I think if we ask, leave questions to all at the end, are you happy with that? Yes. Oh, no, so, uh, should we do the questions all of the deputations at the end? Or? Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just think it'll be a bit quicker. If you'd like to make your deputation, please. Uh, this is a very quiet residential area. I have lived there since 1981. At that time, uh, Carl Christian lived next door to me as uh, with his parents. And they did have a small, and I say small, little cafe. And it was more than just a little beach. It was just a little beach hut. Uh, actually, at the end of the current um, terraced houses, it was at that time sold, the land was sold uh, by the Christians uh, to a firm uh, whose name I cannot remember. It was, uh, it was built into offices uh, which subsequently failed and then uh, the, uh, the land was then um, built onto four uh, four terraced houses. And Carl Christian's parents, uh, part of their deal with the uh, de developer was that there should be a, a, a cake shop for Carl to actually uh, make his cakes and sell the cakes. There was never, Carl Christian never ran a cafe there, ever. His parents ran a cafe, it was all sold, and he, having done his qualification, he then set up as um, a cake maker. And that was, that was as far as it went. Um, they, had, they have got a rear garden area, which was part of the, um, the shop, and I have been through there, and yes, it does open out onto a, 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 an area, but it's not a bad area, and in fact, he and his, uh, his partner did used to use that as a garden. I live in 114 next to uh, 116. And for exactly the same reasons, we enjoy the peace and quiet of our rear-facing, south-facing rear garden. If there are events uh, going on in the cafe, ha even if it is only a couple of times a month, then there's going to be a certain amount of disturbance. And why do we live here? Why do, why do we move there in 1981? Because it was quiet. We brought up a family uh, in this area. It was very, very quiet. There are a lot, now quite a lot of young families living there. And they have moved there quite simply because it is quiet. There is no need for any more than a simple cafe. There's no need for anybody to be selling alcohol um, in a the cafe there. Cakes, tea, and the rest of it, fine. But there's no need for an alcohol license. Thank you much. If you could just press a... Okay. If you wish to do your deputations. Oh. Sorry. I wouldn't... You, you can do if you wish, but I, I, was, just, I was just going to um, just, just raise a couple of issues that have arisen from um, the residential objections generally and also from what, what you've just heard. Um, there are elements of the grounds of the objections which, uh, and we, I touched on one previous uh, in relation to parking and traffic issues, which um, don't relate to the licensing objectives. And as you'll, you'll all be aware, you, have, you are statutorily bound to focus your attention only on the four licensing objectives. So um, just for clarification for everybody, um, uh, the need for additional premises um, uh, that's certainly something you cannot take into account. Um, car parking traffic dangers I've mentioned, um, effect upon other businesses or a, um, an alleged change of use, those, those are, are, are planning matters, They're certainly not things that you can um, turn your mind to. Obviously, issues that have been raised um, generally relate to um, consumption of alcohol out outdoors, the use of the rear garden, etc. We've heard that that's not going to be, um, I, I don't think, um, used in any way uh, for the business. Pro 
proximity of residential properties, um, it being a family area, etc., that though the issues of nuisance, um, antisocial behaviour, uh, and crime and disorder, those um, are relevant to the licensing objectives. Um, so just just for clarity. Uh, further, in terms of it being raised that it's a wide sweeping application, that's not an unusual thing, I'm sure. Um, the licensing officer behind me will confirm that it, it's regularly their advice to applicants um, for the reasons that the applicants outlined to make such a, a sweeping application uh, to avoid the need for returning to make individual applications on separate occasions uh, and the bureaucracy that in, that entails. Um, it, it's Unfortunately, it's a common theme, and I'm sure um, those members making representations will have heard me saying this uh, over and over again. But it's important that I do stress it for, for all the parties, that the Licensing Act has introduced a... Um, a system which is particularly weighted towards the applicants in the first instance. Um, it's a very permissive scheme, uh, but what it does is it th that is accompanied by a wide-ranging suite of powers to deal with issues if and when they do arise. So if the anticipated fears of residents do materialise and there are issues associated with the premises which relate to the licensing objectives, um, then a review can be brought. The licence can be reconsidered and brought back before the um, subcommittee and action that is appropriate taken at that stage. So in the first instance um, there is there is um, great scope that's initially handed out to applica applicants, uh, particularly new applicants where uh, previous uh, premises do not exist, um, such as in this case, um, and that there is no real evidence as such and uh, of, of issues because there can be no evidence at that stage uh, on initial application. So I hope that sets things into context for the subcommittee and if there's anything else you want me to um, bang on about, I shall, I shall do so. <laughs> um, do we have any questions, you wish us to get representatives? I've just got a couple. Oh. I do have one question to the solicitor. Um, you've indicated that there's a review procedure if, if the wide sweeping application is made. Is it possible to do that in reverse? So rather than as a matter of expedience for two people, perhaps build up the trust and the respect from the residents and then have a review once that's been built, is, is it possible to have it? A, absolutely. Way it's, it's possible for the subcommittee to decide, for example, that it is appropriate to implement conditions which um, bind to the licence and um, would um, put, set the parameters within which the licence can operate. However, in order to impose those conditions, the subcommittee does need strong and valid reasons, and th those, those have to be based upon evidence that they've heard that justify them. So it, it's commonplace for those conditions ordinarily to be placed once a review has taken place and there's evidence of, of issues that make them appropriate. Um, so, as I say, in the first instance, generally speaking, the statutory scheme is to allow the operation um, to impose conditions and limit or restrict the operation of a, of a, of a proposed business without ev sufficient evidence in the first instance might be considered um, not to be a proportionate approach. But we can include conditions, especially if it's been stuff that's been mentioned during the meeting. Certainly, if the if the applicant is indicating that they would they would be happy so yes. um, with a yeah with a yeah. condition that restricts, for example, the use of the garden um, to make it absolutely clear that it's not going to be used for business use at any time, then that is something that the subcommittee could as attach as a condition to the license. Uh, apologies, one follow-up question from that. Equally, the applicants would be able to indicate if they wish to amend their... I'm, I'm, I'm asking if that's possible. If the applicants realise that actually it might be more um, expeditious and pertinent and, and diplomatic to do it that way round for the first review period, 
and then to alter it, they could equally ask for that to be considered by the committee. I think if if the they choose way. to do that and they choose to take that, that, um, that route, then that is open to them, certainly. And if um, the application, as it's submitted to the authority, is in effect converted, it's, it's termed in the legislation as being the operating schedule. Um, and when, when it's submitted and approved um, and turned into a license, then the contents of that application are formed into working conditions and then attached to the license. So if the applicants decide they want to amend their application during the course of the hearing, then that automatically then means that the um, license will be subject to conditions enforcing that, those terms, if that makes sense. Thank you. I think the consent answer is either side can um, apply or ask for a review. So. Appreciated. Thank you. Um, I've got a question. Um, you did raise in your deputations that the concerns about the evening events. If there was some sort of limit on the number of times a month that those evening events could take place, would that help alleviate some of your concerns? Um, it certainly would assist um, and I think the idea of it becoming a community venue rather than um, attracting passers-by it is certainly more attractive and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm heartened to hear that it would be a booking system for the, the themed evenings so yes for me it would allay a, a number of fears to a certain extent and would um limits on the latest entry time so people you wouldn't be turning up in the night it would be starting early would that also give you some reassurance i think a late night on on any evening is going to be a disruption to everybody um i would say that a 10 o'clock closing enforced and who's going to enforce it Thank you. Um, thank you. I think that there, it it's, certainly would be assist. I think that the danger is that there's, it's very difficult to um, monitor and control what other people do. And I appreciate that that's not something that committee can take into account. But certainly whether it's whether alcohol is, is required in a residential area and the repercussions of, of permitting that. I think if there's conditions or things offered up today that are put in the license, it becomes part of the license. And in the same way, evidence can be gathered, and we do have the police do occasionally bring stuff forward. So I think it'd be a very foolish licensee that would risk his Indeed. license by breaching. Thank you. Any Hello, you are. Right. Um, are you completely against an alcohol license, or is your stance that you're against the flexibility of the license that's been brought forward? Thank you. Um, from my point of view, it's the, it's the broad sweeping. Um, I, I, I would be less objected, objected to um, uh, the license being required for eating. I don't think an off-license license is required when we have nearby retail outlets to supply booze to, the, to, to residents but also to beachgoers. I don't think that's required. You do have the Easley Tavern very close by. I think um, having the license attached to meals is a nice idea. Um, I wouldn't be averse to that. Thank you. Okay, do the applicants have any questions they wish to ask of the deputations? Um, I don't think questions. It's, uh, there's quite a lot of content in the responses that I hoped we'd already covered in terms of the outdoor areas and the evening use. Um, yeah, I don't think we actually have any questions of, of people. You do get to summarise at the end, so that's a very nice one. In which case, there's no questions. I move on to deputations from. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, the first thing I'd say is that um, I've had over 50 uh, correspondents uh, against this application and less than five for. Um, everybody's been very, very reasonable about it. Uh, but I'm here today um, to represent two people. 
um, as I've already said to the solicitor, a Miss Booth and a Mr. Uh, DeMarco. Um, so, and some of these things have already been discussed, and um, so, but I'm going to read it as, it as it is, so it's out in open um, play, as it were. So, um, the first is from a Miss Booth, and she writes with regard to the above application, which is to serve alcohol seven days a week on and off site from 10 o'clock until 2300 hours, which we are led to understand will be inside and outside at the front and the back of the property, a prospect which is totally unacceptable for this residential area. We were given to understand that the premises would become a cafe. Miss Booth accepts that this might include serving drinks with meals, but this application appears to be for a bar, which is completely different, a completely different matter. She objects to the application because, A, the south side of Festing Grove, the north side of Salsey Avenue, and the east side of Culver Road, in addition to Eastern Terrace, will all be impacted by outside dining at the back of the premises. And in addition, Marine Court will be affected from the front. Noise carries a long way, particularly after customers have been drinking. B. All day drinking and off licence sales gives the prospect of noise, parking problems, damage to cars, rowdy behaviour. The front outside space is quite small and the possibility of people sitting and drinking there from 10 o'clock until 2300 hours would cause disturbance. In conclusion, Miss Booth has no objection to a cafe or to a drink being served with lunch, but certainly not from 10 until 2300 hours. Uh, and that was a point that was made by quite a lot of people, I have to say. Um, the second um, person uh, I'm representing is a uh, Mr. DeMarco, and um, he objects um, for the following reasons. One, public nuisance. With the exception of this premises, St. George's Road is a densely packed residential area. The location of the premises is embedded within terraced housing either side, which offers no separation between the properties. The premises also has residential dwellings to the front and the rear. The noise emanating from the premises, if granted a license, will cause significant disruption to local residents. Not only will there be loud noise generated by people drinking from within the premises, the application also describes being used using the outdoor spaces to the front and the rear for consumption. Many local residents have bedrooms and other relaxation spaces within the immediate vicinity of the premises, and this will compromise the well-being of many. In addition, there will be noise from the moving of tables, chairs, clearing of glasses, chinking of bottles, taxis coming at the end of the day, which will all cause further increased levels of disturbance. It also needs to be considered the impact of customers from smoking cigarettes outside of the property and the effects on local residents' health. The application also requests to operate the premises as an off-license. Not only will this add more disruption to the local residents with congregations of people coming from the beach looking to purchase alcohol, it will also cause, it will also cause impact to the wider community through issues relating to public nuisance. Two, crime and disorder. A premises which sells alcohol increases the likelihood of issues relating to crime and disorder in the area in which it's located. Antisocial behaviour is often seen and experienced in other areas where these types of premises are located. It is, it is not uncommon to see damage to property and vehicles in the immediate area caused directly by persons who have been using the premises. This also includes urination and breakage of glassware. Our local area is also subject to a number of issues with groups drinking alcohol which cause antisocial behaviour or crime and with the premises operating as an off licence this will contribute to antisocial issues. Three, protection of children from harm. Many of the local residents have children who live within the immediate vicinity of the premises, some with bedrooms only metres away from the outdoor areas of the premises where it wishes to, which wishes to serve alcohol in. The disturbance caused by approving this application to sell alcohol will affect a child's common right to feel safe and able to live in an environment which they have the ability to concentrate on schoolwork and sleep in a quiet area. It must also be considered whether venues which promote a drinking culture in the highly densely residential areas where children live is ethical and the right thing to do for a community. Four, public safety. The consumption of alcohol will increase the likelihood of alcohol-related accidents occurring and the severity of their outcome. 
Alcohol lowers people's inhibitions, and innocent passers-by will potentially be affected through verbal and physical abuse. In summary, Mr. DeMarco uh, says, despite its proximity to the sea, for most of the day, and particularly in the evening, St. George's Road is a peaceful and quiet area. When many local residents moved here, we understood and accepted the operation of a shop which sold cakes. The conversion to a cafe is a change. However, the impact of allowing alcohol to be sold at the premises will significantly affect the local residents' existing quality of life. St. George's, St. George's Road is a residential area and is not like Highland Road, Winter Road, Castle Street, etc., where there are existing similar types of commercial properties and the granting of a license has a marginal impact on residents. The selling of alcohol between the hours of 10 and 11 p.m. is wholly unacceptable and the response of local residents of local residents demonstrates the strong objection to this application. So that was what um, those two people said. As I say, I had a lot of um, uh, correspondence on this matter, um, and um, lots of people very, very reasonable about it. And as has been picked up in those two, um, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not a lot of the people aren't against, as has already been said here, against alcohol being served, it's just with conditions, I think, was the main thing that came out. And I think the other observation I'd make from things that I'd, I'd heard um, is that um, there's a lot of talk about the Eastney Tavern and the fact that, um, you know, that, um, yeah, we've got, you know, there's, a, there's a place already here, a residence already here, a public house already here. But generally the area has over the years, since the barracks has closed from when it, had, when it was, there was lots of public houses nearby because it was a barracks. The areas and the councils accepted that these things have changed and the place has turned more into a residential area. All of those pubs have been converted into dwellings and it's only the tavern that's left. So that was the observation that uh, was made. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Um, first of all, I think what we have to bear in mind is this is a premises license. So this license will go on that building irrelevant of whoever is operating it. So that's there for not just now, but for the future. And I'm sure the two people in front of me have every intention of opening this as a very nice little cafe that will only open a couple of days a week. But if it becomes successful, that will expand. Now, if you live anywhere near the seafront, which I do, I know that once the background daytime noise goes, any noise uh, is very loud. You know, the background noise is gone, people are walking home, they might just be talking to each other, but it's extremely loud. These houses are in such close proximity that even somebody just having a, a conversation, sitting on the forecourt, having a glass of wine, which we know at the moment is not going to take place after six o'clock, will disturb the residents. People going home, going about their business, not necessarily trying to shout or scream or make a noise, will affect those residents. Now, they moved there, lots of them, for the quiet and peacefulness of it and the close proximity to the seafront, I'm sure. But if you have to live somewhere where there's constant noise and bottles going and people talking, it's, it does affect your residential amenities. And it is antisocial behaviour. Now, I know they want to have these two themed evenings a month, but there's nothing to stop, as in other premises, people taking a bottle of wine along with them. They don't necessarily have to serve alcohol or sell alcohol. People can take it, and they're just charged corkage. So that is possible. They also have 12 tens licenses a year, which enable them to apply to stay open later or to have a special event. My real problem, my real worry with this is, no, it might not be successful at first, but if it becomes successful, people are drawn to it and the numbers increase, then it's going to be a living nightmare for those people who have to live with it every day. And I really think that you should take that into consideration. It's not somewhere where you can walk away from if you live there, you've, you're stuck with it. And whatever you do today, those people, you will go home to your nice homes and not have to worry about it. They will have to live with that every single day of the week. And we all know, I've, I've spoken on several occasions, there are restaurants that open. We're not going to open the back door, we're not going to use the rear garden. It becomes really hot, what happens? The door opens. You then have to go through the process of review, which is, sounds very easy, but it's not. You have to gather evidence, you have to cite instances, you have to keep a diary. A complete disruption to your normal life. 
and it changes things forever. So whatever you do here, whatever conditions you oppose or don't oppose, I do hope you take into consideration these are real people living in their real lives that could be severely impacted on by a decision that you all make today. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any questions from members? Kind of. Um, am I allowed to give a personal opinion? Um, I would strongly advise against any opinions being expressed. That's fine. Let's, by, let's, by let's the advise against themselves. Themselves. Okay, Councillor Simons. Um, so, what would you be happy with? I mean, what? What? I mean, are you comp are, are you representing people completely against an alcohol license, or are you saying that you're not happy with the fact it being a late night license? Are you saying that you're not happy with it being an off? License. What's your main concern? I think the outside spaces should be used. I don't think it should be off sales. And I think food should be sold. Drinks should only be sold with meals served. Not just be able to come and buy a drink and go wander outside and drink it. I think that that's what people, as John said, people would find it acceptable if it was restricted to drink with food, with a meal, and that, you know, obviously at an earlier time, maybe 10 o'clock, will be more acceptable. Are you saying meal with a substantial meal, like what we've heard a lot recently, or are you talking about meal with a, you know, a glass of wine with a cake or, a, you know, something no, like that? No, I'm talking about a meal. Um, I'm sorry if we've got this wrong. I was under the impression we were hearing um, objections read out from representations rather than opinion. I um, apologise if I've got that wrong. They are doing adaptation. I don't know, Your Honour. Um, is there a particular element of what's been said that you object to? Perhaps, perhaps you can just... Can you just clarify um, what you've just said from your representatives, which one said they're, which? They're concerned about the sale of alcohol altogether. So if I'd represented them, they, don't, they, they wouldn't like the premises to sell alcohol at all. Uh, I was just under the impression that we were only allowed to hear the actual representation. Yeah, you're, you're, quite, you're quite right. The, I was asked that well, yes, but um, the evidence that can be given is strictly um, limited to issues that have been raised by written representations. They can be expanded upon, but they can't be new issues introduced. Obviously, if you've asked a direct question, um, it's unfortunate that it's, it, I think if it, if it were a, the actual person making the representation, that probably would be slightly more acceptable than a representative giving, introducing their own evidence, if you like. Could I just say, although I'm representing those two people, many, many more people got in touch with me. Um, so although I'm only given a spoken representation on those two people, the representations I read and the people who've got in touch with me have expressed those views. I think, as I understand, it has to be based on representation that they've had brought to them. But you can ask questions, but there's a limit to what they can answer, obviously, from today. So is there any questions you wish to ask? No which case we move on to summing up. So it's the um, deputations get to sum up first. You don't have any more summing up to do. Would you two like to sum up your, basically just a summary of, you don't have to, but it's opportunity. Yeah, I've, I've said this before. It's a very quiet residential area. It's not an area that needs. It doesn't need somewhere selling alcohol. Cakes. Tea and cakes, fine, on the way to the beach, on the way back from the beach. But even at lunchtime, really, do you need to encourage people to drink at lunchtime? I don't. Okay, thank you. And now ask the applicants if you'd like to sum up your case, please. Oh. Okay. I was just going to say in summing up that um, those points that um, was raised by Council Madrick did come up in my... Um, my, my, my representations um, from, from the people I was representing, the very much that um, the serving of, particularly from Miss Boo, the serving of alcohol with a meal, um, and certainly not to 11 o'clock at night, was very clear in her representation. And certainly um, Mr. DeMarco made points to that in his um, four points that he made. Thank you. Uh, would you like to do your summing up now as well, please? 
Um, okay, so obviously there are a lot of points raised. I want everyone to know that we read each and every one of the objections and support and in against that came through um, more than once and printed them out and read them again because um, obviously we wanted to um, set out the letter so that we could allay some of those fears and um, I think I'm not currently sure if we did. We seem to be having uh, more questions similarly even though I think we've explained that we weren't obviously aware that we should probably put a letter out to you. I think if we'd had the letter drops to ourselves in our own home as well, it would have highlighted it really quickly that there were worries and we would have sent this letter out a long time before. It's, I'd quite like everyone to know we didn't have an objection for almost three weeks and we got 33 from one Friday to another. So um, it was really hard to respond to that without knowing in advance. Um, I hope that we have explained that the um, outside areas are not going to be that that's another theme that obviously came up a lot the residents at the back of the houses the courtyards that all face in on each other there will be no activity out the back of the house at all that's our home and it will remain our home it will remain our home so that it's our garden and our balcony and it won't have anything to do with the customers um, the other thing we'd like to say is obviously just that the noise will be captivated to indoors. There will be no drinking in the evenings outside, either at the front or the back. Uh, the area at the front is not small. It's, it's very large. It will be contained to hours only that we've, that we've already explained before. Um, Thank you very much. Is everyone present that you've had opportunity, I mean, everyone present, happy that you've had ample opportunity to put forward your case and had chance to say everything you wish to say. In which case I suggest we now adjourn so that we can actually discuss it. Um, I'd say we wouldn't reconvene till before 12.15. It might be later than that, but I think that's a fair time. Um, I think if you said three quarters of an hour, it won't, it, so the subcommittee won't reconvene before midday. Yeah. Um, it may take the subcommittee longer to deliberate, to formulate their reasons and um, uh, to get that all, all written down. Um, so it won't be, you can go away safe in the knowledge that the subcommittee is not going to reconvene before 12 o'clock, um, but it may take, may take a bit longer than that, unfortunately. Um, one thing I would stress, if you do happen to bump into any of the subcommittee uh, whilst you, you're moving around the building or using toilets or stepping outside, um, please do not talk to them at all. Um, they, they will not talk to you. It's not them being rude. Um, but if there's any kind of conversation in between now and the decision being announced, that can make things incredibly difficult for everybody. Um, so um, just bear that in mind. Yeah. Um, other than that, Chair, so, back to you. Um, when you come back, if the door's shut, please don't sort of wander in. The door's open, you come back in. But otherwise, if you could wait sort of out in the lift area, and it definitely won't be before 12, so... Everyone who has made a representation will get a notice of decision sent to you personally. So it, it would, I'll send it to you by email or by post for those who, who haven't got emails. Okay, I'm afraid I have to ask all of you to leave apart from we have a officer to advise us and the legal advice as well. For that. If you could stop the um, camera, please.